You know, every so often, we come across a concept so bizarre that it just breaks the mind. And weight control is a prime example. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. Human intuition is a great asset. It keeps us alive. As humans, we rely on our intuitive understanding of the world, and we extend that intuition into shipbuilding. But every so often, ship science produces a concept so bizarre that our intuition breaks down. Weight control is a prime example. It defies our understanding to believe that a few extra coats of paint make a ship inoperable. And here's the curse side of intuition. Because all too often, what we can't understand, we just ignore. And that is why lack of weight control is the silent killer for a ship. Be afraid. Understanding weight control is really about instinctively recognizing the need for it. And your instinctive reaction should be fear. I knew a passenger ship that underwent major conversions. The owner invested everything they had into this ship. When it came out of the shipyard, that ship looked beautiful. And the vessel was not allowed to operate because improper weight control rendered the vessel unstable. And the sad part was that at at that point, the owner had very limited engineering solutions available, since everything was already built. Even worse, they had already invested their money into what is now a currently useless ship. And this isn't just a problem with conversions. Lack of weight control can even kill a new ship. I joined a project at the late stages of constructing a new vessel, where the owner had originally required weight control from the shipyard. That was the right move. But the shipyard never followed through. They never did their part, and the owner didn't press the issue. Fast forward 20 months to the end of construction. We discovered that the vessel had only achieved one third of its planned cargo capacity. One third. Imagine going to the bank and having them say, oh, I'm sorry, you only have one third of your savings. That ship was too heavy. Our owner had invested hundreds of millions into this ship. Financially, they were already committed to accepting that vessel. But the vessel missions were now greatly restricted, and the ship looked far less attractive as a business investment. This is why I say be afraid, so that you understand the need for weight control. And it really has to hit you on the emotional level to drive you forward. Your reaction can't be at one of confusion or aggravation over all of these annoying numbers. Right at the gut level, your first reaction has to be one of gut-wrenching fear, of getting that phone call, being told that you have just invested millions in a useless ship. It's a real danger, and that's the fear that we need to work with so that you understand the need to avoid that danger. That emotional context is where we start from when we talk about weight control. It isn't about spreadsheets and boring margins. Weight control is about that fear of being overweight with nothing you can do about it. That fear is what motivates us to control the vessel weight, to make sure that we don't end up in that worst case scenario. Weight control is risk mitigation. Okay, we've established the need for it. Now let's establish a little bit of the guidelines and rules for weight control, which starts with the weight limits. You see, you have to understand that the process of ship design starts by making a guess at our ship weight and then refining that guess down. At the beginning of our design process, we pick a hull shape and size. The hydrostatics of that shape dictate certain limits on maximum weight and center of gravity. Those are fixed hard limits. We then build inside that shape. We fill it with all the components required for a ship. Structure for the hull, plating, framing, engines, propellers, beds, paint, etc. 
All of these components add weight to the ship, but there are no magic fairies that go around ensuring that the construction weights match the limits of our hull shape. We need careful weight control to keep everything within that narrow margin. And that's the other part you have to understand, is that we're talking very huge forces being balanced on the pinhead here of a narrow margin. Now at this point we've established the general idea, but the word weight control seems still pretty nebulous. And that's because it means different things depending on who you ask. For example, in the offshore industry, weight control refers to this whole ISO standard that details out reporting requirements and communication and documentation requirements for weight on development projects. For shipyards, weight control means we're checking the contract. What's required there? Are we going to be weighing components and how frequently? How often do we have to report on the evolution of the vessel weight? For design offices, on the other hand, Weight control is all about the initial estimate, creating an accurate initial estimate. So you can see the actions involved depend on who you ask. But the attitude is pretty similar all around. So let's focus on that. Weight control, the attitude, is really about several things for a good weight control technique. First, creating an accurate estimate of weight changes before starting construction. Second, maintain consistent responsibility for tracking and monitoring the evolution of the vessel weight. Typically, you're going to pick one guy and say, this is your full-time job. Third, regularly checking on the evolution of the vessel weight during construction, after construction, during vessel operation. The key word there is regularly. You set a schedule, you keep to it. You get worried when things start falling behind schedule. And fourth, ensure that key decision makers at all levels recognize the importance of weight control. Make sure everybody understands what happens if things go wrong. A large part of the discussion about weight control is pointless unless you start with a good weight estimate. It all begins there. In the weight estimate, we detail the weight and location of every single item on the ship. This is how we find out what the total weight and center of gravity is for the ship. This is a very boring job, but very, very important. But it's not just about adding up a whole bunch of numbers. It's also about the formatting and careful documentation. A good weight estimate includes several features. First, we've got margins added to the estimate that artificially increase the weight and vertical center of gravity. This provides a safety margin and breathing room during construction. Second, the weight items should be divided into logical groups. The estimate needs to be organized so that anyone else can review it and determine if each one of those items seems reasonable and each of the groups seems reasonable. Third, the estimate needs to provide clear supporting documentation for all weight items. There shouldn't be any question where a weight came from. Vendor information should be readily available. Any calculations should be easy to understand. And then fourth is revision control. The weight estimate is a living document, frequently updated. You need a way to track all of those changes. Talking about changes, one example of weight estimates would be how they're implemented in Ship Constructor. Now you can actually combine Ship Constructor with a popular software called Ship Weight, where you can initially start with non-modeled parts and just define parametric weights. And then as you start to actually model your parts in 3D in Ship Constructor, you can replace your parametric weights with the actual modeled weight of Ship Constructor. This is a great way to start with getting a quick initial estimate, and then as your design evolves, actually replace it with the far more accurate 3D structural estimate. If you want to learn more about the Ship Constructor, I've got the link in the description below. And full disclosure, they did provide me with an evaluation copy in exchange for mentioning their software. One other technique that DMS can employ with weight estimates is we can combine project management techniques with weight estimates to track the evolution of the vessel's weight during construction. Just like a construction cost budget, 
The weight estimate becomes your weight budget, and you can use earned value management to track its evolution and predict the final weight at completion. Using those methods actually allows you to shift from a reactive to a proactive strategy. And feel free to contact DMS if you'd like to learn more about how we can help you with that. You know, weight control is not sexy at all. But ignoring it leads to dire consequences. And I get it. Intuitively, we have a hard time believing that these little changes across the ship add up to huge penalties. That's why proper weight control needs a champion. Someone to remind us of that hidden danger. They stay vigilant of the evolving ship weight, armed with their weight estimate. I know, I know, corny, right? It sounds overly dramatic, because weight control is not about the process. Instead, I want you to focus on the risk. Think of the consequences if we ignore weight control. A potentially unusable ship. Now that is something worth taking action on. Thanks very much. I'm Nick the Naval Architect. Engineers should be overpriced, inaccessible, boring. Boy, were they wrong. If you want to have an accessible engineer to work with, click that subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos. And did you know that as a professional engineer, I do more than just videos? Check out the website to find out what I can do to make your project easier.